All right, let's pick up on some of those themes there with Bill Davies, a professor of plant science who joins us from Hong Kong, where he's on a research project. Thank you for joining us. Pleasure. Thank you for having me. Now, for people who aren't familiar, subsidies are basically financial support or assistance given to certain industries to promote social policy and social good. But in 2016, why is there still a need for governments to subsidize farmers? Well, I think your correspondent did a good job su summarizing just how complicated the, these issues are. I mean, uh, I think in the past there have been, uh, there have been a good cases made for subsidies in particular circumstances and in particular parts of the world. And that generally has been to respond to an urgent requirement for more food. And, the, and Europe after the Second World War is a good example of that. Everybody was urged uh, it, within the agricultural business to work harder to produce, produce more food, and they were given some economic help to do that. In China, in response to a really serious uh, food security um, set of issues in the 1960s, the government introduced policies to subsidize some of the inputs in, into agriculture. And that, that was, I mean, presumably that continued, uh, that contributed to what has proved to be a, a startling increase in food production in, in that country. But things move on and that there are real problems with these kinds of interventions. Your correspondent also mentioned uh, trade restrictions and export limitations which often have quite unpredictable effects on the price of food and the availability of food. Now, Bill, so, at, Bill as you I'm mentioned, uh, these subsidies came about because there was a need for more food production but one ongoing bone of contention for French and to an extent European farmers is a refusal to cut production even though there are these stockpiles of produce that could go to waste. So why is this still happening? Well I think uh, it, it's very difficult to generalize. I mean I would actually take issue with the, the question of stockpiles. I mean we have a very serious food crisis within the world now where the demand for food is increasing dramatically because there are more people, economies are, are, are growing and people want to eat more and they want to eat different things. And the result of all of that is uh, chief scientists and policymakers around the world have coined this term the perfect storm, which they see in the future I mean, to some extent, it's facing us now. It's massive increase in the demand for food and the problem of making that food available to people, partly because of the difficulty of producing it, but also lots of other social questions over how it's distributed and the, these kinds of things. So it, it's not strictly true to say that we have too much food. I mean, locally, that may well be the case under some circumstances, but in many, many circumstances, people do not have enough to eat and they don't have access to good quality and safe food. And we need to do something about that as a society. Right. Now, Bill, another issue, we're seeing also a UK Parliament study thinks that the UK leaving the European Union would also have a serious impact on British farmers due to the loss of subsidies. Do you agree? Well, farming is a difficult business. I think I started my career in plant science, crop science, as a farmer myself. It was a great life, but it, it's a hard life. And when, when we look at different farming sectors in the UK, we see some real problems. One of the diff there, there are a whole variety of issues here. And one of the really overriding factors, which I think British farmers have uh, grappled with effectively is their responsibility for countryside stewardship. I mean, farmers produce a lot more than food, and we use this term natural capital or um, ecosystem services. These are things that the population generally values. The, the fact that we like the way the countryside looks, we want Britain to look British, and this involves great, nice, neat green fields with cows and sheep. And farmers generally are, are rewarded for doing that to right. some extent, right. but they would argue that 
pro probably things are still not not balanced terribly well and ch cataclysmic ch cataclysmic change like us leaving the EU the the impacts are going to be very difficult to predict but right. farming right. is already a tough business the average age of the British farmer is over 70 lots of farmers are getting out of dairy for example because they can't make effectively the money that's required to cover their costs. Well, it's something that we'll definitely be keeping an eye on. We'll have to leave it there, unfortunately. Bill Davis, live for us there in Hong Kong. Thank you for joining us.